Dear God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love, care, mercy, and protection. I pray you bless us. And as we attend this lesson, may you guide us and be the center of it all. In the name of God, amen. Amen. So today we are not going to use the chalkboard. We had enough of what I wanted us to share. So let us now look at this. I want to start for some one, two minutes for others to join. We wait for others because we are only 20 and the class is made up of more than eight people. Okay. Um, two, one, two minutes. But meanwhile, those who are here, you can go through this question. I hope you can see that, that, that my screen. Can you? Yes, yes. Yeah, meanwhile, you go through that question. I want to start, they will join us. Uh, Mr. Wokan, I guess, uh, uh, let's start, start the reason because the, reason. the girls are aware. What time this reason usually start? So we can't keep waiting for people who are not sure if they will to join us. Eh? So you find us on the way, then we'll join. So the girls, let's go through this given the background of what we have been looking at. My particle is projected. Use some annotations here. Hmm? The particle is projected and from an origin O with a velocity 
30 i plus 40 j. So this one means that it has 30 meters per second squared horizontally and 40 meters per second squared vertically. Find the position and the velocity vector of the particle five seconds later. Hence, find the distance of the particle from, from the origin and the speed and the direction of its motion at this time. Take acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meters per second squared. So I first state what is given horizontally, because I told you that we have a velocity in terms of ij, 30i and 40j. This one can be split into 30 horizontally and 40 vertically at that very starting point as the initial velocities. So that's why I'm having the separate motions, for horizontal motion, I take the horizontal component of the velocity, which is 30. Horizontal distance covered, I call it x, because it has not reached the other side on the same horizontal ground. So this one is simply the horizontal displacement. Then uh, the time after five seconds. Now, horizontally, the velocity remains the same. I want you to note that. Horizontally, the velocity remains the same. It is vertically, the velocity changes. So for, for vertical motion, initial velocity is 40. This is the initial velocity from this one. It is 40, the arrow shows that I'm dealing with the vertical motion. Horizontal displacement, or is, uh, vertical displacement Y, I call it Y, time is five seconds acceleration would be 10 meters per second if it was if the body was projected downwards uh, or simply acceleration is 10 but since we are dealing with acceleration due to gravity and the body is projected upwards the acceleration becomes negative 10 meters per second squared so this one explains the acceleration due to gravity the the velocity vertical velocity is not going to be the same at the end but we say the horizontal velocity is the same, but the vertical it is going to be different. So this is our diagram. The initial velocity was split into 40 vertical and 30 horizontal. This is the horizontal displacement, and this is the vertical displacement. So we are interested in finding the velocity vector at this point and uh, speed at that point, position vector at that point, and the distance at that point. After five seconds, the time was given as five seconds. So at this point, let's call the vertical component of the velocity V and the horizontal component of the velocity, let's call it U. But remember, this velocity is the same as this 30. For those who want to know where it comes from, get it from v squared equals u squared plus 2as, which becomes which, which becomes v squared. You can write down somewhere. I find it difficult to write on this chalk, on this whatever. So v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So squared would be equal to u squared because acceleration due to gravity is zero. From the third equation of motion, V squared is equal to U squared. So V is equal to U. So horizontal velocity doesn't change under this arrangement. The vertical component of velocity that changes. Mr. Wakayan. Mr. Wakayan. Yes, sir. If I may chip in, um, um, they, they can as well attain that, uh, that uh, uh, what you're telling them by using the first equation. I don't know, Nika, Nika doesn't allow me to. I wanted to share the whiteboard. Eh? Mm. I wanted to demonstrate it on the whiteboard, but now I don't have the rights. OK, then you stop sharing and then maybe I Let's see if I can okay. see it from this side. Eh? OK, let me see. I don't know if they're seeing my whiteboard. Yeah, it is coming. See it. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Wakan has, has told you can use the third equation to, to show why the velocity doesn't change in the horizontal. But uh, we know that uh, the first equation is given by that. Eh? Yes? So when we are dealing with the horizontal motion, um, they're asking us to get a component in the horizontal. Okay? And if I may use that, I can say GT, okay? I'm just doing it for formality. But you know, um, when you are dealing with the horizontal motion, acceleration due to gravity is, is zero, okay? So you can as well um, get it from here that the velocity at any time T is the same as the initial component, okay? The initial component uh, of the velocity uh, in the horizontal. So it can as well uh, be good from this, yeah, even if you don't go to the third equation. And then when you are getting velocity for the vertical motion, velocity at any time t, when I use the arrow facing up, it implies I'm looking at the vertical motion. I have it in the horizontal, then it's uh, in the horizontal motion. So the velocity at any time t in the vertical uh, direction, I can call it uh, Vy because y is in the vertical uh, minus gt, okay? So they have given you the initial velocity. They expressed it in, in i and j uh, format. Eh? They told it was uh, 30i, is it plus 40j? John, yes. you can check for me. Yeah, it is 30i plus 40j. Okay, great. So if it's 30i plus 40j, it implies that uh, um, you are the the, the vertical component of the initial velocity is going to be 40 since it's on j okay they told you g is 10 that's what they told us in the in the question mm. so we can use the the first equation to attain um that you know and then this one doesn't change this one they have told us it is i think 30 it was 30 which remains 30. so this would be the components of the velocity Okay, mm. the Vx is the component in the horizontal, then Vy is the component in the vertical. And we can use the same knowledge to get the position, or you can call it displacement at any time t. We can use the second equation and we use this same information and we substitute in the second equation and, and we get that. Eh? So John, um, we can as well pick it from the first equation without necessarily going to the third. Eh? Since uh, yes. they have given us time in the equation, because usually the third is when you don't have time. Eh? Yeah. So that's that's what I wanted to let the girls know. I guess I can stop sharing if they're not having questions. Eh? Girls, do you have questions before I allow Mr. Wakana to share again? So how come the horizontal? Yes. Um, the the initial is the same as the as the final. Like practi practically, how does it happen? How does it happen? Yes. How does it happen? Um, Mr. Walker and I uh, showed you a sketch. Okay. So if the body is moving at any time t. Assuming I'm timing it at that point after after five seconds. Eh? Okay. So I'll have the horizontal component there and I'll have the vertical component. Okay. But because um, the body, which the, the component of that body in the horizontal doesn't, um, acceleration due to gravity is usually, it affects the body, which is going upwards eh? or downwards. Basically, it, it works when the body is, you're considering motion in the vertical uh, direction. So in the horizontal, it's as if the body is moving horizontally. And in that case, our G is zero, okay? So because of that, when you substitute in the, in the equations, uh, automatically, it, it becomes uh, Vx equal to Ux eh? using our equations of motion. Eh? Okay. Okay, uh, if, 
if if there are no questions, uh, maybe John, I can stop sharing and share. Okay. Over to you, John. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, actually, I feel that simplified the work here. Uh, we shall simply go through this working and we shall realize that my task is to find V and U. Uh, I told you the other time that if you find the uh, velocity vector, you can easily get the speed by getting the magnitude of the velocity vector. So the same applies to distance. If you want distance, you can get the magnitude of the displacement. So using our, our first equation of motion, we realize that and get the vertical component, which I called U, which is 40 minus 10, then times five. So the vertical component is negative 10 meters per second squared. So this negative simply shows us that it is in. Actually, the body was coming downwards. That's what the negative mean in that case. It was projected upwards, but it was on its way coming down. I'm going to show you in the diagram what I mean by that. Horizontally, we use our simple form formula that horizontal, display, horizontal distance covered is simply the horizontal component of the velocity time with the time. So we have the horizontal component of the velocity, which was 30 meters per second. Then time was the time taken, which is five seconds. So horizontal displacement becomes 150 meters. Then uh, I come here to find the, sorry, here, to find the vertical displacement. Vertical displacement of the body at any time till we can use the second equation of motion, where our S becomes the Y, our U is 40, the vert, our U initial vertical component of the roster, the time is five seconds, the acceleration due to gravity is 10 with a negative, then the uh, time is five squared. So when you sub the vertical displacement at any time t, which time is now five seconds, is 25 meters. I have obtained the vertical displacement after five seconds, and I got the displacement after five seconds, so I can get my position vector, which is 150 horizontal and 75 of vertical. So this is the position vector after five seconds. Of course, from this position vector, you can easily get the distance covered. The distance, we get it from the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is 150 plus 75 squared. Then we can get this one, our distance of the particle from the origin after five seconds. Then first, we, uh, we agreed that uh, the horizontal Verost at any time t doesn't change from the horizontal component from the origin. So our u, this u is verost at any time t, remains 30. Then verost at any time t, our time is five seconds, we got 10. But remember, we are using vector approach in this case. That's why we are having i and j. So if I want the speed, at that given time, I shall simply get the magnitude of this, which magnitude becomes the square root of u squared plus v squared, and I get my speed as 10 root 10 meters per second. The direction, the direction of motion at an angle theta, so direction I told that we use we use the, the, the velocity components, the velocity in vertical and the velocity in horizontal to get the direction of the particle at any given time t. We have the vertical component after five seconds and the horizontal component after five seconds, then we can get the direction of the motion of them. So this is the diagram that shows a negative 10 vertical component of the after five seconds Negative means it was coming downwards. 
though projected upwards, but it was on its way coming inwards. That's that's why the negative. Point. Then we have the horizontal component as the 30. So I can find my I can find my direction using the tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent. Okay, following. So the conclusion would be the particle, therefore the position vector is this, and the velocity vector is that the distance from O, the origin, at this time is that there should have been meters, and the speed of the particle is that meters per second squared, an angle of 18 meters per, at an angle of 18.43 degrees below the horizontal. Is it okay? Yes. Yes. So sorry to take you back, but like that position vector and and velocity vector. Mm. Uh, okay, position vector. Like I didn't get how seventy five came about. How 75 came about here? Yeah. Yes. 75, is, uh, 75 was the displacement, vertical displacement after five seconds. We got it from here. They have written it like before even getting it. Right? Dad, I forgot to tell you it was a mistake. This, this, this step should have come somewhere here. Okay. Yeah. The rest is it fine? Uh, maybe John. Uh, I guess the girls need to to understand that uh, you're using capital V and capital U uh, to mean the vertical mm. component and the horizontal component. I hope I hope that's clear. They are not mixing up the signs. Eh? That, that's why at times uh, I, I find it easier if you use uh, subscripts eh? so that uh, someone can easily tell which direction they are working with. I, I see a hand from Mampumza. Panzi, Panzi, can you talk to yeah, us? This one, this one, capital V yes. for this. Mm. Okay, Mr. Okay, and first finish eh, before Panzi comes in. Yeah, capital V for this case is the velocity at this point after some time, too, which is five seconds, the vertical component of the velocity, and U is for the horizontal component of the velocity. In other words, this capital U would be substituted with the with the V or U X U horizontal. And this would be VY within the vertical component. So, I so guess they should, this one is yeah, I guess uh, that's clear. So they shouldn't mix up uh, the signs. Eh? Okay, can we hear from uh, Um, Sure, I didn't understand why the velocity, I didn't understand how the velocity ends up being negative 10. How it ends up being negative yeah. 10, uh, Mr. Wa can uh, try to explain. This body was projected upwards, but on its, it can go up and then it returns. Eh? So uh, after five seconds, it implies that it's going to be moving downwards. Eh? Of course, when you're starting the question, you cannot tell where the position is going to be. That's why he sketched it that way, OK? But uh, technically speaking, it was supposed to be somewhere down here. Yes, thank you. It was supposed to be, you see, it was supposed to be moving down. So it was timed when it was on its way down, eh? OK? Something yes. of this kind. But of course, uh, when you are starting, you cannot tell why, you know, this diagram is to aid you in working out the number. Okay, so you should substitute where in the equations and they should tell you where the particle is. So the answers you get after substituting in any of the three equations, depending on which information you're having, of course, 
uh, it tells you where the body is. Is it on its way up or is it on its way down? Okay. So if, if you substitute in and you are getting a negative one of the answers, then it should tell you that it was in the opposite direction to the initial projection. Eh? Okay. Yes, teacher. Uh, do we have more questions before I move away from the whiteboard? Yes, Mr. New, I have a question. Uh -huh. In order for us to get the vertical distance, did we use S is equal to ut plus half at squared, or we used the same equation, we used the vertical distance, which was V times T? Okay. This equation can work for both. I, I know Baka and I ignored that part for acceleration because it's a zero in the horizontal displacement. That's why he said you get velocity times time. Eh? So what, what he's having um, is basically only this part because the second part, this is zero, okay? So in the horizontal, he ignored this second part, but technically speaking, uh, you're supposed to use the second equation to do both parts, okay? I don't know if it makes sense. Yes, uh, Yeah, so uh, in the horizontal, which he called uh, X, um, I can call it uh, the displacement in the horizontal direction by saying SX. Eh? So he used uh, the component in X times the time. Remember that this is zero. Okay, because the acceleration due to gravity is zero. So what is happening in the working is only this part, x times t. And I think you got 30 times five. Eh? Then you can use the same equation in the vertical, okay? So you get SY, which you called, I think, Y. The, the denotations shouldn't confuse you. It is the same working real. You just need to understand the principles behind it. So I'm putting a half G because the body is initially projected upwards. Okay. So um, here I think you had, uh, was it 40? 40 times, times five. Uh, uh, then minus a half, and all dg is 10, then uh, uh, t is 5 squared. I think this is where you got, uh, John, I don't know which answer you got here. Vertical? Yes, vertical displacement. Uh, negative 10? No, that was velocity, I think. It that was velocity. It was 75. 75. Right? So it will be 75 meters. And then here you're having 150, okay? So they wanted you to, to state the position, okay? Mr. Wakana stated it as um, xi plus yj. But if you want, um, you can state it by the in column form. Eh? You start with that, then you put 75 here. But this, if you want, you can write it as 150i. Plus 75j. That's the position of the particle after five, five seconds. Okay, and he told you that you can get um, your distance here by getting the magnitude of this uh, displacement. Eh? So we combine uh, both the horizontal displacement and the vertical uh, displacement to come up with a position of the part after five, five seconds. The same thing is applied to the velocity. I, I hope this helps. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Theod. I don't know that anybody has a question so far. If they have any questions, they can ask. Eh? Mm. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's go to the second question. Second question, I think we can all see it. You can, you can note down the important things from the question. A golf ball 
is hit towards the pin with a velocity of 50 meters per second. This time, velocity is not given in terms of IJ. It is just velocity of 50 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. If the pin is 180 meters away, how far from the pin will the ball land? Then to what is the farthest, what is the farthest the ball could hit with this initial velocity? The farthest, they mean maximum range. So I give you the assumption. In case a question asks for the assumptions, and feel free to say that, we can assume the ball to be a particle. We can assume that there is no air resistance, and we can assume acceleration due to gravity is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared for vertical motion. So this assumption comes in only if a question asks, but you are not, you are not uh, obliged to do it, to state them. So I guess we have noted down some things. Let me go back to the question I note also. The, the, the initial velocity is 50 meters per second. Then our angle is, at the time we told you that it's not always theta, you can call angle another letter. Sometimes they can mention alpha, beta, gamma, lambda. So don't lock yourself in using theta alone. So they're asking us for, they're asking for if the pin is 180 meters, if the pin is 180 meters away, how far from the pin will the ball, would the ball land? The diagram is here, unfortunately, down. So if the pin is 180 meters away, 180 meters would be this distance. But you realize that when the ball was projected, it passed by, it passed over the pin, then landed on the other side. So they're asking for this distance. This is... So this is the 180 they are talking about. The pin is 180 meters far away. And now they're asking for this distance, which we can call in later. So, can go straight away and we say that we can find, like I told you that we can find, there are two methods, the vector approach and then this method that we are going to use. But either way, the simplest way is to take this point to be a point X, which is our X is the horizontal distance and then the Y. When the particle falls on the same horizontal ground as the projection point, the vertical displacement is zero. We talked about that. So that one can guide you. Why am I looking at this point? I'm looking at this point simply because I can easily get the distance from the point of projection to where the ball lands. So if I can get that horizontal distance covered, which is now the range, I can easily subtract off this distance, the 180 meters. Then what I remain with is the one that is being asked in the question. So my task is to find the horizontal range. I've called it X. Uh, how am I going to find that horizontal range? The factor is here. The formula is here that horizontal distance covered is given by initial velocity times time. So to get the horizontal distance covered from this point up to this point, I would get uh, I would get the initial velocity, the component, the horizontal component of the initial velocity times the time taken from the point of projection to this point where the ball lands. So that's why I'm having X, I call, I call it X equals U X horizontal component of the initial velocity time. time. Uh, where U X is given as U cos 30. 
So when I substitute for 50, I get my X as 50 cos 30 times the time. Which time? I had not yet gotten it. So before I conclude that time is five seconds, I need to first get it. How do I get time? I go to the vertical displacement. Vertical displacement guides us to find time. Why? Because from, from this equation, the vertical displacement at the point where the body lands, the vertical displacement is zero. I know the vertical component of the initial velocity, it is u sine, sine theta, uh, the time I don't know. I know acceleration due to gravity is negative. They have given it to us as negative 10. So when I substitute for u is 50, uh, the angle it is given us, it was given us 30, uh, the g is 10, I can easily get my time as zero and then time as five. So zero from the point of projection, five at the point where the ball lands. So when I get this time, it's the time that I substitute in here in the equation of horizontal distance covered is equal to component of the initial velocity horizontally times the time at that point. So I can now get the total horizontal distance covered, which in this time is the range, which is two, 100. 216.5, I subtract off the 180. The 180 was the distance of the pin from the point of projection, horizontal distance. So I can get how far the particle lands beyond the pin. All together. Not. Oh, no. Exactly. Sir. Okay. Hmm? So I mean, my question is, you're talking about how far the ball will after the pin, but is that what they asked in the question? Because I thought they just asked for how far like the ball will land, not after the pin. So I'm wondering why we have that small difference. How X. far from the pin? Mm. Have you read that? Yes, it has. Yes, how far from the pin will the ball land? Okay. So I told you how far from the pin we are looking for this distance. But now to get this distance, there is a simple way the simplest approach in this case would be get the total distance from the point of projection to where the ball lands. That one we can easily get it using the second equation of motion. And second equation of motion suggests that when the ball lands on the same horizontal ground as the point of projection, the vertical displacement is zero. We looked at that, but the horizontal displacement, the horizontal distance covered remains as X. In this time, it would be range but I can, I can leave it to be X, the horizontal distance covered from here up here. So if I can get the whole of this horizontal distance covered, and we were told that the pin is 180 meters away from the point of projection. So this one is, is 180. So if I can get the whole of this, this distance, which I can call, if I can get the whole of this one, I subtract off 180, then I can get how far the, 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 the ball landed from the pin. And to get, the, to get the whole of this distance covered horizontally, I can use I can use the second equation of motion. Second equation of motion, teacher Theod has mentioned it several times. That our horizontal component is equal to U horizontally, which is UX, then times T minus a half 
acceleration due to gravity, then time was t squared. But horizontally, we, we have been saying that acceleration due to gravity is a zero. So horizontal distance covered, horizontal distance covered, which I can simply term, I can simply call x or range for this case. It remains as ux, but ux is u, the cos of what? Cos of our angle theta times time. We have u, we have a theta, we don't have time. So the task is how do we get time? We go back to this very equation. We go back to this very equation, but this time we have it in form of vertical displacement, which is u, y, then there is a t minus a half, get t squared. So for vertical motion, acceleration due to gravity is not zero, no. So we have the initial velocity, this is a sign of the angle theta. Remember, this is a zero. Why is zero? Because we are looking at a point when the border has landed on the same horizontal ground as it was projected. So u is equal to zero. This is u sine theta times t minus a half. This is our g times the t square. So what is the importance of this equation two? The importance of equation two guides us in finding time. Why do we find time? We find the time to put it in this, to put, to put it in this equation I can call star, such that I can get a value for x. x in this case is the horizontal range from the point of projection to where the particle lands, so that I can subtract that value, which is 216.5 minus 180, then I can be able to get this one that is being asked. Is it okay? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. So the second question is the second question is second question is where is here. What is the farthest the ball could be? Farthest the ball could could, could be hit with this initial velocity. That question simply asks us to find find the maximum range. Teacher, it's below the diagram. Hmm? Yeah. Eh? Farthest the ball could be hit. That's the maximum range. Uh, we for maximum range, we can still first get the X, okay, I derived the expression for the for the for the time and then the expression for the horizontal range, but still you can quote the formula here that the formula for maximum range is given us who can remain who can remind us in the formula for range is it? U squared. U squared. Mm -hmm. Sine two theta G. out of what? G. G. Out of G. G, eh? G. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then if you quote the formula for range, you simply state that for maximum range, for maximum range, sine of two theta. Sine of two theta is always equal to what? 
is one. a one. So your error marks one. can easily be obtained from u squared out of d. So you substitute for your one. Substitute for your y use for your which was fifty and you ten. I think you come up with this answer. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, what happens if we use a vectorial approach? Vectorial approach, the first thing that we do, you remember the first example that we looked at? Uh, the first thing that we do, we have our initial velocity that was 50, but the first thing that we do, we treat it as I and J. So we treat the components of this velocity in terms of I and J. So. If I have the velocity and I have the angle, I can get the corresponding component. So this would be the initial velocity, the initial velocity in terms of I and J. U cos theta plus U sine theta, this is I, this is J. So when I substitute for U 50 and the angle, uh, the U 50 and the angle, the initial velocity would be this in I and J. I get I guess that is okay. Now to get the position of the particle at any time t, we use the formula. This is the position of the particle at any time t. Where this is, where this u is the initial velocity, which is this one in vector form. And then acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. This acceleration due to gravity. I also wrote it in form of vectors. This is just simply tells us that it acts only in vertical motion, not horizontal motion. I guess we are following. So the position, note this formula, it is very important. When we use vector approach, we use this formula. That the position vector, this is the position vector, it is going to be in ij. The position vector at any time t is initial velocity, which is also in vector form, ij, then plus a half a t squared, where this a becomes a negative g. So if I substitute in equation 22 for a, which becomes g, and g is a negative 10 j, and u is this one, you know I got u from, so when you substitute in equation 22, this is what you are supposed to come up with. Can you do that? Because I skipped some one, two steps there. One minute. Where there is you, I said where there is u, this is velocity. Where there is u, you substitute the, 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 the velocity in vector form. You know where I got this one from. Substitute it here. Then where there is a, you put there 10, negative 10j, 10 because a is here, negative 10 j. So when you substitute and you, you, you collect like a terms for j and i, you should come up with the equation 23. So it's not very direct from here that you come here. There is one step that I skipped intentionally. Is it okay? So the position vector at any time, the hour U was 25. Uh, Row to theory. That is, this is an I. Don't forget to put the sign for the vector. 
then plus 25 this is a j uh-huh now the whole of it into into t so this becomes a minus a half times 10 then t square but that 10 was accompanied by a j So this is going to be a five uh, so the question is how am I how how did I get this? Of course you have this twenty five J. This twenty five is the same twenty five times T outside is here, minus five T squared is here of it into j then this one remains as 25 root to 3 this t multiplies inside to get 25 root to 3 t i so this is the position vector at any time t so this position vector at any time t has two components it has the horizontal component and it has the vertical the vertical component so the horizontal component which you have as uh, x would be 25 root of 3 times t. Then the vertical component would be 25t minus 5t squared. This is what we have here. So the vertical displacement of the particle at any time t is given by y equals, coming from here, the vertical component. Then, because we said that the, because we said that the ball lands on the same horizontal ground, vertical component is zero. Therefore, you can equate 25t minus 5t squared to a zero. Then you can find your t which is zero and your t which is five. T zero corresponds to the instant at which the ball was projected and t equals five corresponds to the instant at which the ball reaches the landing point. That is okay. Now, to get the horizontal displacement of the ball, the range, we consider we consider the horizontal component of equation 23. Where is equation 23? I told you equation 23 is the, is the position vector at any time t. This can be split into the horizontal component of distance covered and the vertical component of distance covered. We have dealt with the vertical component to give us time. The time we have obtained, we are going to use it here in the horizontal component to find the horizontal distance covered. So that time I got, which was five, I substitute it in the horizontal component of the position vector, I get the total horizontal distance covered, which is this. Then to find the extra distance from the pin, I can get this one minus the distance of the pin from the point of projection like before. Then the maximum range maximum range there is another approach here which can be achieved when the angle is 45 degrees that one we saw it so maximum range can be achieved when the angle of projection is 45 degrees. So I can go back to the original formula, which was 50 cos theta i plus 50 sine theta j, where there is theta, whether it was what or what, but the condition for maximum range, I substitute the angle of, uh, the angle of projection to be 45. So I get that my initial velocity that corresponds to the maximum range as 25 root 2 i and then 25 root 2 j. Then I can continue in finding the position vector at any time t using this c velocity that I have obtained. So the displacement of the ball at, yes?
the displacement of the ball at any time t would be now would now be given as the position vector of the ball at any time t u t u is the initial velocity but in vector form which is this one plus a half a t squared so when i substitute u as this one into this equation i substitute u and then my acceleration due to gravity into this equation i should get the position vector at any time t as as that so from this we can say that the ball lands when the vertical displacement is zero. So I equate the whole of this one to zero for the ball to land on the same horizontal ground. I equate the whole of this to zero. Why do I equate it to zero? I me find the time such that the time I have obtained, I can substitute it in the horizontal component of the distance covered. So when I equate the whole of this one to zero, I get my time as five root two. So when I get five root of two, then I can substitute it in the horizontal component of the distance covered. So using t five root of two, the landing time, the maximum range can be obtained from x equals u x t, where horizontal component of the velocity is this twenty five root of two times time. So I I, I get twenty five root of two. Then times the time which is five root of two, which is two fifty meters. So two fifty meters is, is the maximum range. I don't know whether it is fine. Um, yes. Okay. That the step after that that one which has twenty four in it. Eh? That, that okay, yeah, 20 root to t minus 5t squared equals zero. Okay, what happened to the other one, which was alone? That one which has i, this one, the i, yes, what happened to the i one? Yeah, that one, the i, yeah, yeah, hey. hey. yes. now, now, this in vector form, the vector form gives you both the vertical component and the horizontal component at the same time it is it it, it it gives it to you in form of i and j so this would be the position describing the horizontal component and the vertical component so if you are to split this one from this equation one could conclude like this from this equation one could say x is equal to, so this equation is equivalent to, to writing it like this. 25, this is 25 root two. That is for horizontal. And y equals 25, this is root two, two times t minus this is five t squared. So these are two equations. The first approach that we used, we were having equations of this nature of this nature. Now the two equations can be made into one when we are dealing with the vector approach. So the position at any time t describes the i and j, the x and y component in the same equation. That's why after this equation 24, I split it into two parts. The first part is this, the vertical, which is this one. And since the ball lands on the same horizontal ground, we say the vertical distance, vertical displacement is zero. That's why I put it to zero. So from this component alone, I get time. So when I get time as that, I can now also go to the same equation i pick out the horizontal component which is the same as this so from the horizontal component which is 25 root of 2 times t it is the t that i didn't have but since i've obtained the t from this vertical component i can substitute it here to get the horizontal distance covered which is that
Mm? Oh, okay, John. <coughs> I I hope it's clear. Now there is someone who was asking me in the chat uh, if acceleration due to gravity uh, we are using uh, of ten is a standard value. I think I need to clarify on this. At, mm. uh, in Erevo mathematics, we use acceleration due to gravity as nine point eight. Yes. Unless if the question has stated that use G as 10, but in Orevo they use it as 10 because they round it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So note that if the question has not stated uh, that use G as 10, always use G as 9.8. Okay. Yes. In math, I know that physics people use 9.81, but in mathematics, we use 9.8. Please note that. Shall not be using 10 all the time. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Wakana, thank you so much. I don't know if the girls are having questions. I see we are three minutes past our time. Can we get one or two questions and then we wind up? Now, I, I need to make a reminder that uh, they are doing their math test next week on Friday, and they are going to combine math one and math two in one paper. So you need to prepare for that, okay? Do we yes, have questions? And... Yes, John. Someone is asking what, uh, why we use 45. Uh, <clears throat> I think, John, I don't know if you can answer that. Why do we use an angle of 45? Okay. Uh, for the maximum range, this takes us a little bit back. When yeah, you've we, explained it before, of course. Yes, when we use formula for you, for the range. Okay, maybe let's, let's uh, state it in a simpler way. Uh, for you to attain maximum range, the body has to be projected at an angle of 45. It's standard, eh? yes. They will not tell it to you, but if the question, um, there is a hint that you are looking for maximum range, then at the back of your mind, you need to know that for you to attain maximum range, the angle has to be 45. Okay, uh, girls, if there are no questions, I guess we need to end it here. Um, we are meeting again next week, but uh, you'll be doing the papers on Tuesday. We won't have a lesson. Instead, we are starting tests on Monday. So the hour of next week, you're going to be doing uh, online assessments. Um, you need to prepare adequately so that uh, you score, you know, a mark which is, uh, worth your effort. I don't want you to take these tests uh, lightly because you never know they could be the basis for your promotion to S6. So um, I guess we can end it here, John. Yeah. And let's see if you are having thing. anything to communicate. Yes. The last thing I can mention is that there are 90% chances that I'm going to set this exercise one up to one up to six. Because that's what we have covered. So I might not pick anything from afar. I might pick from here to test and see whether people have been really following. I guess they have had.